Here we go. <clears throat> Welcome back to another edition of Gen Sports Corner back at you for March 25th, 2023. It's been a little minute, but we're back at it. Big night tonight. Um, I'm back moving on to boxing. David Benavidez versus Kalen Plant fighting at uh, tonight. Pay-per-view and showtime. Big fight here, man. Big fight. So, you know, I'll be I'll be talking about the the Eagles and their offseason moves and whatnot moving forward. But right now, super middle hit uh super middleweight, uh 12 rounds of boxing. We're gonna get into it, man. Before I get into it, um, since this, this will be up on YouTube, make sure you like, subscribe, go to the YouTube channel, click the notification bell so you know every time I drop a video. Without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about it, man. David Benavidez, Caleb Plant, bad blood, man. The fight is going down tonight. Saturday, March 25th, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and then they should be walking out for the main event around midnight. So, you know, you look at both of these guys, they've been they've been circling around each other for a couple years now, and now they're finally going to be meeting in the ring. Let's go ahead and look at the tail of the tape. David Benavidez, 26 years old, fights Orthodox, 26 and 0 with 23 knockouts, I believe. And then he's 6'2 with a 74 and a half inch reach. Versus Caleb Plant, 22-1 and one, and one loss to Canelo Alvarez in his uh, fight before the recent one with Darrell. And uh, 30 years old, fights orthodox, 6-1 with a 74-inch reach. So Benavidez has one inch in height over Caleb Plant and then a half an inch in reach. So they're about the, the same same height, same build. But Benavidez is definitely the bigger guy, definitely walks around heavier, has some, some good power in both hands. Whereas Caleb Plant is more of a slick uh, counter puncher, defensive boxer, definitely going to jab your head off, you know, light you up with that jab and whatnot. So you look at these guys and how they how they match up, right? And we look at um, let's take a look at the betting line through Caesars. So Benavidez is the somewhat heavy favorite, minus three hundred and sixty for Benavidez and plus two hundred and eighty for Caleb Plant. So Vegas thinks that Benavidez is going to win this fight, and the over under for the amount of rounds that this fight will go is at 10 and a half. And the betting side for the favorite is for the under at negative 150. And the, the over for 10 and a half rounds is plus 107. So they think this is probably going to go maybe nine or 10 rounds with Benavidez winning by stoppage, whether that's knockout or TKO or what have you. So let's go ahead and look at their last six fights, get a sense for who these guys are, who they fought, and, and and what their last two to three years have been looking like. What's the level of competition been at? Have they been sharpening the sword? Have they been taking it easy? What's the deal? So we look at David Benavidez, his last six fights, uh, his, his one going, his most recent fight was David Lemieux uh, last year. May 21st, he had the knockout stoppage. I believe that was the second round he stopped it. He was tagging Lemieux up. And then before that, in November of 2021, he had the TKO stoppage of Kyron Davis, I think in like the eighth round. The ref stepped in and stopped it, which was which was a very good fight, very good back and forth. Kyron, very tough customer, man. Not going nowhere, brings his lunch pail to work and throws back, so... That was a uh, good one for Benavidez. And then Ronald Ellis before that in March of 2021. Okay opponent. He had longer reach. I think he had like a 77 inch reach. But he just, nothing special. Had a TKO stoppage there. Uh, Romero, Alexis, and Gulo. Um, tough fighter. Tough fighter, but he's limited. And he's, he's just going to eat shots for 12 rounds. Not going to really have a whole lot coming back at you on offense. And he, he got a decision over him. And and that makes sense. I'll, I'll give him that. And Gulo, he's a tough customer. It takes a lot to stop him if you can do it. Anthony Durrell, he had the knockout stoppage. He uh, caught him with a, a good punch in the third or fourth round maybe and opened up a cut over Durrell's eye. And then in the sixth round, they stopped the fight because the cut got too bad. And then his sixth fight, uh, before this pre the the most recent one, this is back 2019. He won over Jaleon Love. Jaleon Love again. He knocked him out in two rounds, I believe. Bombed him out of that that fight. But solid fighter, nothing special. So a lot of solid guys, and even Lemieux at that point in his career, 
you know, he, he's getting towards the end. He's, he's in the twilight part of his career. And David, David Lemieux being, ah, shoot, he's like 5'9", uh, very short reach, like 70-inch reach, though. He's, he's a clearly smaller guy who had to get on the inside against a fighter that has very quick hands, taller, longer reach. I mean, it was a good matchup stylistically for Benavidez. So he's fought some some good guys, but nobody's really like, even David Lemieux, not in his prime. So he hasn't had that guy to really test him, really push him. And then you flip over and look at Caleb Plant's last six fights. Most recent fight, well, let's go back to beginning, uh, 2019. Beginning of that year, that's when he first won his title, his first title against Jose Uscastegui. And he had two knockdowns of uh, Uskasagi in that fight. And he, he won that title. He earned that title. He won a very, very good decision over a tough opponent. And he got that title. And then later in the year, in July, he beat Mike Lee. That was a layup in his first title defense. Mike Lee, uh, he's just a guy. You know, no disrespect, but he's just a guy. Then in February of the next year, right before lockdown, he fought... Uh, Vincent Feigenboots, who's a pretty solid guy. Now, that's a, that's a good, solid opponent, and he was able to, to beat him by TKO. So that's a very good win for Plant. And then he fought Caleb Truax in January 2021. Unanimous decision. Truax, again, another guy in the twilight of his career, but very tough, tough customer, similar to Angulo, who Benavidez fought. He offensively, he's very limited. The speed's not there, but in terms of toughness, like you're going to go 12 rounds with him, even if you're tagging him up. So it was a good stay busy fight, in my opinion. And then later in that year, he got the fight with Sayul Canelo Alvarez, and he lost by TKO in the 10th round. And I think that was more of a fatigue knockout than anything, but he, he made a good showing of himself, made a good account of himself in that fight. And I think that was a great learning experience for him. You went up against one of the pound-for-pound pound hardest punchers in the sport and fared very well and had success at times. And I think that was a good learning experience for him in a similar way that fighting Mayweather was for Alvarez back in the day when, when Canelo was a young fighter. right? And then his most recent fight, he came back off that loss against Canelo and fought Anthony Durrell, who at that time, I believe he was 37 or 38, and that's, this was just this past year in October. However, Durrell, still a very solid fighter, even at this point in his career. And not only did he have a very calculated and well-executed game plan, but he was patient. And I believe in the ninth round, caught him with what was knockout of the year for 2022. Very, very impressed, not just with him and his game plan, but with how he bounced back from the Canelo Alvarez loss. So he's, he's, in my opinion, he's been tested. He went from being a guy who wasn't tested, who in my opinion was possibly like a paper belt holder at 168, right? Along with uh, Billy Joe Saunders and, I always get it wrong, Smith. The old, the uh, the bigger Smith brother. Either Caleb, uh, yeah, Caleb Smith, I think. Caleb or Caleb, I can never remember. But they were all guys there that, in my opinion, if Benavidez didn't lose the belts due to weight problems and, and the drug issue, right? I, I thought that he could have easily have been undisputed. And while he was getting those things sorted out, then Canelo comes up and beats all of those guys and becomes undisputed at 168, right? However, Benavidez, I think, is one of the top guys at 168. And now Caleb Plant, even coming up the loss, he has come back and established himself, reestablished himself as a top contender at 168. And I think a uh, contender is even better than he was when he had his belt. So I think that he's been testing in his last six, and that's going to play a big role in this fight. So now that we have a little background on these guys, let's go ahead and look at uh, what the keys to victory are and some of the, the, the attributes that can go in one... Uh, in favor of Plant or Benavidez, speed, power, footwork, defense, so on and so forth. And then I'll give my final prediction. So what's really intriguing about this fight is not only have they been kind of circling around each other for years now, but the the animosity, the bad blood here. You look at the, the press conference, the first one, 
and they just came out swinging. They, they, they came out like cordial for about five seconds. And then <sighs> Benavidez's trainer, who's his father, starts like, man, he starts popping off crazy at the press conference. And then him and Caleb start going back at it. And then David jumps into it. And, and he starts talking and he's saying like, yo, I'm going to knock you out. I'm going I'm to make you feel pain. And, you know, he's saying like six by round six, he's going to knock Caleb Plant the F out, put him to sleep, put him in the hospital. He said, that's his goal. And then Caleb, cool, calm, collected, like, yo, like you think it's a game, but you're going to see, I promise you that. Right. And then at the weigh in, either, I think it was Friday, the weigh in, Thursday or Friday, don't remember, but. They weigh in. Caleb comes in looking shredded, absolutely shredded. Benavidez doesn't look as shredded as Caleb, but he is clearly in, in great shape. And then they go to face off, and they start yapping at each other. They join back and forth. And then Caleb Plant puts his finger to David Benavidez's neck just like this. And then, boom, fireworks. It's, there's a lot of emotion behind this fight, which is... Is is what more can you ask for in a boxing match between two of the top guys in that weight class who don't like each other? Right. So you have all that leading to this fight. And so now we can go ahead and look to the keys to victory for these these fierce foes right here, right? So keys to victory for David David Benavidez, in my opinion, one, he has to cut off the ring. And I don't mean just walk plant down, because uh, David, he has a tendency to not necessarily cut off the ring well, but he kind of like runs after you. And at times it's almost like he'll follow you. Like you hold the cape up like a matador, he'll follow you, right? He has to be very calculated in how he's cutting off the ring against Caleb Plant. Because Caleb Plant, he's not any of these other guys that Benavides has faced. He's not Anthony Durrell. He's not Jalen on Love. He's not Kyron Davis. No, he got good feet, he got slick defense, he got that Philly shell, he takes a variation of that, and he, he, he gets in and out of trouble. We saw it against Canelo Alvarez. Canelo, at times, was having, and, and Canelo can walk you down, he can cut off the ring, but he was having problems early on, really landing clean shots, even though he was cutting off the ring. So, Benavidez is going to have to cut off the ring, and then that leads me into my second point is, be patient and be defensively responsible because and I don't think that Benavidez is foolish enough to underestimate Caleb Plant but he cannot underestimate his power and his precision and and Plant's power comes from his precision because Canelo Alvarez phenomenal defense David Benavidez above average defense but Nothing crazy. So he's really going to have to be disciplined going into this fight. Because Caleb Plant, if you miss, he's going to make you pay. If you miss, you got to pay the toll. And if you miss on a two or three points combination and Caleb comes back and catches you with a counter right, it might be different than you expect. So he's going to have to be patient and defensively responsible. And then third, he has to apply pressure early and often. Effective aggression, not just aggression, effective aggression. And I think that Davis is more than capable of doing that, but he's going to have to keep that in mind. And I'm pretty sure they've probably been talking about that in training camp. Now, the keys to victory for Caleb Plant, first one for him would be movement. And that goes hand in hand with the key to victory that I put for David, which would be cutting the ring off. So for Caleb, movement, moving around a ring. Getting using his feet to get himself in an advantageous position to be able to punch and get out of harm's way. And then second would be counter punching well, playing right off of the movement. Because Dave Benavidez, he's going to want to walk you down and apply pressure. He's going to come up in that high guard at times and apply pressure. Sometimes David might be on the ropes, put that high guard up and just catch punches. You might you might get one or two through on him, but he's going he's going to try to take that gas tank down and then slowly walk you down, apply pressure, and then he has really really he has a really really big gas tank. So he's going to be able to throw those punches and bunches in round seven, eight, nine, and throw them with some ferocity. So 
Caleb is going to want to counterpunch well. And this leads to my third point, pace yourself. Because you're going to get your early rounds off, I think. But come round six, seven, eight, I think David is going to try to walk him into deep waters. And he's going to have to be able to counterpunch with the same ferocity and pinpoint placement in round seven, eight, and nine as he was in rounds two, three, and four. That's going to be critical for Caleb Plant. All right. So that being said, let's go ahead into the attributes and see uh, which side uh, gets the most points. So first would be speed. Uh, Caleb Plant, they call him sweet hands for a reason. Really, really good speed. Accurate puncher. And then David Benavidez, extremely fast hands. Not just for his size, but the fact that he's a bigger guy is what makes it so much more impressive. Because he's punching like a welterweight. And he throws punches in bunches. He throws flurries. And he's not just shoe shining either. He's he's throwing to hurt you. Um, so speed wise, I think it's a push. I think it's a wash there. I think they're um they're both very, very fast and they'll be comparable. Now, next looking at power, I have to give this one to David Benavidez. Ben David Benavidez is the bigger fighter, he's the harder puncher. I think he's the naturally bigger fighter. Caleb Plant, he has more power than people give him credit for, but I think the power disparity is, is clearly in David Benavidez's favor. So power goes to David. Third would be footwork. This one, you look at David Benavidez, he comes out in the orthodox stance, but oftentimes he fights very squared up. And when he's walking you down and he gets you to the ropes, and Sean Porter mentioned this, he has to cross his feet. And he has to take like a half a half a tick, a half a second to get his feet reset. All right. So at times he can plod when he's moving around. He'll, he'll, he'll chase you down at times, but he he gets into a habit of plodding around. And against a guy like Plant, who has excellent footwork, slick defense, shoulder roll, he's gonna move left, right, move out of range, move his feet, never never getting his feet tanked. I think the clear advantage goes to Caleb Plant in terms of footwork. Next, moving on to defense. I've mentioned this before, David Benefides, above average defense, but nothing incredibly special. He's effective out of the high guard, but he can get hit and he does get hit. Whereas Caleb Plant, very, very defensively sound boxer and very, very slick with that shoulder roll, with that that variation of the Philly shell. And we saw it against Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez had a lot of times where he was trying to hook to the body and come back up top. And he caught Caleb Plant a couple of times, but more often than not, Caleb was out of range or boom, getting that getting that um that right hand up to, to block the left hook. And he's he's very slick. Very, very slick. And if you don't cut off the ring effectively, he's gonna be here in one second going to next, right? So um, I have to give um, the defense to Caleb Plant. Uh, before I keep going forward, um, I want to look at the comments. So shout out to you, uh, Miguel. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, leave a comment below about who you think is going to win. I'm going through the attributes right now that I'm going to give my prediction. Uh, next on the list is stamina. And this is something that I just mentioned about a couple minutes ago. Benavidez. For the punch output that he has, his stamina is incredible, man. Like, he throw these three, four, five, six, seven punch combinations in round two and still be throwing them in round eight if the fight even gets that far, right? Work versus Caleb Plant, really, really active fighter early on, but there have been concerns about him fading later in the fight. And we saw that against Canelo Alvarez, which is why I said that that knockout was more of a fatigue knockout versus him just getting put to sleep. No, I think he was just like gassed. And he got hit with a shot, went down, and he was just so um, so fatigued that he just couldn't continue. He's going to have to come with it this fight because you give David Benavides an inch, he's going to take a mile. He see a little bit of weakness in round eight, he's going to try to drag you out to the deep end of the pool. So this is where I give uh, Benavides uh, the nod for stamina. Next would be ring IQ. And 
I think it's a push. I think it's a wash here. I think both guys are very, very intelligent fighters. If I had to pick one, I would say a slight edge to Caleb, but I think that ring IQ wise, uh, Benavidez is up there. He has so many different things he does. He sets so many traps, but then so does Caleb. And they both manage the ring very well. Like Benavidez will walk you down, but then Caleb Plant is one of the ultimate matadors at his weight class. So it's a it's a style matchup that's just made for each other. So I'd give it a, a push for ring IQ. Uh, next would be experience. And this is where I'd give the edge for the first time, I think clearly, to Caleb Plant. Because I went through the resume in this video earlier and you look at the guys, who he fought and when he fought them, and then the level of competition. Um, like I said, David Lemieux would be the best guy on Benavidez's resume, but Lemieux, bad matchup, because he's a shorter guy height-wise and reach-wise, and he's near the, the end of his career. So does that really compare to fighting uh, Canelo Alvarez, who is maybe number one or number two pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the sport right now? Don't think so. And he, and he gave a good account of himself. And I think in many ways took that experience and came back and you beat Darrell, but you beat him in devastating fashion. I can understand if you beat him and you could say, oh, he's just an old fighter. But no, he's a solid fighter and you beat him in devastating fashion. I got to give experience to Caleb Plant. He's fought the best and then he's come back and made the adjustments. There's something to be said for that. And then last but not least, we got X Factor here. And... As much as I like Benavidez and the things that he can bring to the table, I think one of the best offensive fighters in the sport, I think Caleb Plant, he finds a way. And I really didn't have a lot of faith in Caleb Plant, like I said, a year or two ago when Alvarez first came up to the ranks and was trying to take the belts. I'm just like, okay, these these are guys, they're solid fighters, they're pretty good, but like, there's nothing that's... Outside of Benavidez, there was no fighter that had it. And when you know when you see it, you know what it is. And before I didn't see it. Now I see it in Benavidez, but now I see it in Caleb Plant. He knows how to grind. He knows how to go into those deep borders. And he's been there. And I think he's he he came back in that Darrell fight and that showed me a whole lot, man. Showed me a lot. Cause a fight against Canelo and losing, that can either make or break you. And I think this is that fight is making Caleb Plant. Like I said, in a similar way that the Mayweather fight made Canelo Alvarez. Canelo could have taken that as a blow to his ego and his confidence and not been the same fighter after that. But no, not only did he come back, but he took little tricks and trades, tricks of the trade for Mayweather, the shoulder roll, some of the head movement, and came back a completely better and upgraded version of himself. And this is what I'm seeing out of Caleb Plant. So X-Factor wise, while I would have originally given it to Benavidez, the recent fights that Caleb Plant has had, I give that to Caleb Plant. Um, so overall, I have it scored 4-2 to two to Caleb Plant, and I'm picking Caleb Plant to win this fight by decision. That being said, I think it's going to be a very, very exciting fight. I think it's a 50-50 fight that Caleb wins by decision. And if it goes the way I think it does, if it's a decision fight, I think that both guys are still going to give a great account of themselves. That's how that's how good this matchup is. Win, lose, or draw outside of like a devastating knockout. I think both guys can come out of this fight with their stocks through the ceiling. So that's my prediction for this fight. Um, let me know what you guys think. You know, be there or be square tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. That's when the card starts. And um, also, don't, don't miss the uh, Colbert a fight with Valenzuela. I think that's also, also going to be a banger on the undercard. I'm also going to be keeping my eye on that. Uh, Colbert, Chris, I think Chris Colbert, he's the one that just lost to Hector Luis Garcia, who himself just lost to Tank Davis. So, and Colbert is no, no slouch. He, he ran to something he wasn't expecting with Garcia, but I think he's going to bounce back, and I think it's going to be a really good fight. So, check out the card. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thoughts, comments, concerns, leave your predictions, and um, we're going to see what happens after the fight. Catch y'all later. Peace.